Hi, welcome to our math. Today I'm doing a series of videos on the simplex method. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to maximize this equation under these constraints. One way to do this is with graphing, and I have other videos about that. But in this method, what we're going to use is a matrix. The reason we're going to do this is if it's practice for a situation where you have more variables and equations, and so we just want to see that it works. So what we're going to do is we're going to imagine that each of these equations has a slack variable, and that slack will make it equal to 4 instead of less than or equal to. 2x1 plus x2 plus a second slack. And so now we can set up a matrix. So we have our x1 column, our x2, our s1, our s2, and then what it's supposed to equal. So for our first equation, we have 1x1 plus 1x2 plus the slack, but we don't add the second slack. We're going to add a column for what we're trying to optimize, and then we'll have our answer. So our second equation is 2x1, 1x2, we have the second slack with an answer of 5. What we're going to do then is we're going to put a line, and under the line we're going to put our optimization equation, but because the z with the augmented matrix, this becomes our equal sign. Because the z is on the left hand of the equal sign, what we're going to do is we're going to take these two terms and subtract them over, so it's negative 3x1 minus 4x2 plus z equaling 0. So we have negative 3x1 minus 4x2, and then we don't have these slacks, but we have a plus z, and it's equaling 0. Okay. So what we need to do is we need to find a pivot element, and we'll use that pivot element to zero out the numbers above and below. To figure that out, we find the ratio of this answer column with um, the numbers in our pivot column. So the pivot column is, by, is found by finding the biggest negative, so negative four. And so we take four divided by one, 5 divided by 1, the 1's come from here. The smallest number indicates our pivot element. Okay, so we're going to use this 1 to zero out the next two rows. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take row 2 and subtract row 1, and that's going to replace my row 2. The reason I'm doing 2 minus 1 is because 2 minus 1 is 0, 5 minus 4 is 1, sorry, 2 minus 1 is 1, I'll have more positives. So if I have row 2, that's 2, 1, 0, 1, 0, 5, minus row 1 is negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, 0, 0, negative 4. So we get a 1, 0, negative 1, 1, 0, 1. Okay, now to eliminate this 4, I'm going to do 4 times row 1 plus row 3 and replace row 3 with that. So 4 times row 1 is going to be 4, 4, 4, 0, 0, 16. And then row 3 is negative 3, negative 4, 0, 0, 1, 0. When we add down, we get 1, 0, 4, 0, 1, 16. So if we put this all together, the first row didn't change, so we still, sorry about that. So my first row didn't change, so when I rewrite my first row, I'm going to rewrite the exact same first row. So the 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 4. I'll even give my labels, x sub 1, x sub 2, s sub 1, s sub 2, and z. Okay, then I'm going to replace row 2 with what I got for row 2 right here. 1, 0, negative 1, 1, 0, 1. And I'll replace row 3 with what I got here. 1, 0, 4, 0, 1, 16. All right, so I put this line in for my equal sign. I put this line in because below the line is what we're solving. And the way you know you're done is if all of the numbers below the line are positive because none of these numbers are negative, I know that I'm actually done. 
So how we figure out the maximum is, we say the max, the maximum is z equaling 16, because that's what this row says right here. z equals 16 at, let's see. When we translate this, notice that this has lots of numbers, and this is a unit, and by unit, I mean it's made up of one and one number and all other zeros. This has lots of numbers, this, has, this is a unit, and this is a unit. Unit, val unit columns give us our answers for those variables. So this is a unit column, so I know that x sub two equals four. This is a unit column, so I know that s sub two is equal to one, and this is a unit column, which gave me z is equal to 16. Notice we don't have an answer for x sub one. If we don't have an answer for x sub one, that means x sub one is set to zero. So is, um, Sorry, so is s sub one, but we don't really need to worry about that because we're not really solving for our slack variables, just x one and x two. So the answer is 16 at zero four. Okay, so feel free to stop the video right now. We have our answer, but just to give you a background, if we were to graph this, um, we have 2.5, and four for my x1 values. For my x2 values, I have four and five. You can see a video for this um, in one of my other videos. Uh, the two fours connect to each other. These two connect to each other. And what we have right here is this area. So if we were to test all of these points, zero, four, zero, zero, 2.50 and the point of intersection, um, which is 1, 3. If we were to test each of these points, the smallest, 16, would be gotten at this corner of the feasible region. All right, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, like my Facebook page, and I will see you on the next video. Thanks!